But Where's the best place to surf? Narrabeen. <laughs> <laughs> but don't go there, though. Don't go there. <laughs> well, my goal right now is to beat Mr. Gonzalez that's coming. And I know he's coming to fight, and I know he's coming to win, so I have to be prepared for the game. I remember just always being young, having my meat pie and, um, what else? Meat pie, sausage roll, or a, and a can of Coke watching the game when I was young. <laughs> but how good is it on the hill there, though, at Manly? Oh, it's beautiful. I heard the ground has got, like, new renovations and stuff. Yeah. I actually haven't been since. Yeah. I think I saw a little bit of it, but I haven't been fully. We're going to have to go there. We're going to have to yeah, go. Yeah, we we'll boy. you got to you got to Yeah. Gotta I just get remember get watching the so many good games there. Yeah. I think you I think you were playing once. Yeah. So, sorry, tell me more about these. Let's look so, at <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome to the No Limit Boxing Podcast. We are joined by a very special guest today, Matteo Tapia, all the way from the USA now, mm-hmm. um, back to home shores, back here, Sydney, Australia. Yeah. How good is it to be back home? Yeah, it feels good. Um, I'm stoked to be home. You know, I'm not seeing much. I'm getting ready for a fight, but yeah, I'm so glad to be home. <laughs> How long is it that you've been away now? Close to a year now. Yeah, right. We've packed up everything and just did the move. And you're, you're loving the US though? Yes. Yeah. Now, one thing it I so – has its pros and cons. One thing I know that you wouldn't be – well, you might not have realised that you weren't loving is the coffee. Have you noticed the <laughs> coffee on return? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I just had one this morning and it was just yeah. something else. Yeah, so <laughs> it, it's, it Australians was. just do it. But I, I can't believe that America hasn't got around it. Hasn't got around the I coffee. I don't know. Everything's just drive through. Easy yeah. coffee. Yeah, just true. Stir it up and go. Yeah, they take That's the easy option, don't they? <laughs> yeah. Now From what I've noticed the 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 USA move a big move for you mm-hmm. um, after spending so much time here mm-hmm. in Sydney, Australia. Um, what what brought on the move and why why Florida? I guess. It's like with everything in life, if you feel like you're not learning, you're not growing or you're not getting better, you have to find different options and you have to just venture out, see the world and see see what's out there. And also as well, as a, I knew I was good. I knew I was talented, but I knew there's something else in me that I, I need to find. And that's that's what brought the move. And I've always wanted to do it. I've always wanted to test myself. And I know that's where you have to test yourself. He's and, in the States. Yeah, 100%. And then so you started out in LA mm-hmm. and then went across to Florida. What was the difference there? Uh, well, for lifestyle differences, it's cheaper in Florida. It's safer. Yeah. Um, the works, the works, the boxing world is very similar. It's actually pretty big in Florida. You've got Miami, you've got Orlando, and if you've got Tampa, and they're all pretty close, and mm-hmm. there's a big pool of boxes there. So, and LA was a bit dangerous for us. Like, it's different going there for a holiday. Yeah. You can enjoy it. You're there for two, three weeks. But if you're there living there, it's a different story. Yeah. It's dangerous. The cost of living is huge. And our Australian dollar doesn't go very far over it's there. It's not helping us at the moment, no. is it? And it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> like, I was just buying stuff, and I was like, oh my God. You just have to, yeah, get yeah. on with it. I guess. No, look, it's tough. So, what have what have you noticed the most um, over there with your training partners, um, or mm-hmm. were your training training uh, camps yeah. in general? Um, how much how much does it differ to to here? It's huge. Yeah, um, I'm doing at least twenty five rounds a day in the gym. Like back home, I was just yeah. doing fifteen rounds, getting out. Yeah. Uh, going for my run, but this is just strength conditioning, running, 25 rounds a day, sparring. The biggest difference is um, the pool of fighters. There's so much depth there. You get so many styles. And every time you spar, it's um, it's not a sparring session. It's like a fight. Yeah. You don't know what you're coming up against and they're basically trying to prove themselves. So you're getting to push yourself to the limit every time too? 100%. And I've just found out more things about myself. I'm a way better fighter than what they thought I was, put it that way. And then what about for you? Have you felt like you've um, realised that you're a way better fighter than you were or you always knew? I always had a little, a little inkling that I was good, but now I know 
I can mix it with the best and I can do damage in this division. So, Who's some of the guys that you've been getting in with? Is there any any standouts for you that – I was doing rounds with Janabek. Yeah. So he's got two odd titles. Yeah. Um, How'd that go? It was good. It was kind of timid at the start. I didn't want to show too many cards. Yeah, yeah. Because you want to get your <laughs> – I guess, yeah. And then as, as the rounds started going along and the days we started sparring, it was um, – I found my groove a bit and that's all I want to say. Yeah. I just felt good in there. And I know I'm not – I'm at that level. Yeah, nice. And he's probably one of the most avoided fighters in the world. Absolutely. Why do you reckon that is? What stood out for you when you were sparring? His power? Yeah. Even though I feel like I can take a punch, but when a fighter knows someone has power, you can sense it. Yeah. Um, His timing – and he was always in your face somehow. Not aggressively, but he's just always present. You just always have to be switched on. It feels like the good ones are like that, aren't they? They're always yeah, there. and they're always just there. Yeah. Yeah, nice. So, well, so going through the, the middleweight division now, obviously, Janabek, yeah. one of the guys, one of the most avoided guys. But there's a lot of, a lot of good fights there in that middleweight division at the yeah. top of the tree. You've got yeah. guys, like, guys like Charlo. Yes. What are your thoughts on, on Jamal Charlo? I haven't actually watched too much of him, to be honest. Um, well, it's I, hard. He hasn't been relaxed yeah, either. Last, actually, last time I saw him fight was, who was he with? Uh, Benavides, his yep. little brother. I didn't think he looked incredibly good. No. To be honest. No, it wasn't a standout performance. No. And it could be from his inactivity. And Benavides was a lighter guy coming up too. Yeah. Yeah. I think, he's, I think they're good there. I mean, you've got to respect every fighter, but I can't wait to get my shot against him. Oh, yeah. Because, <laughs> yeah. I, I think it'll be a great matchup. It'll be a great fight. Yeah. I've got something inside me I've got to show. I feel Who, like. So, so out of the division, there's obviously there's a lot of great names out there. Shane Mosley Jr. is a, a fight that could be yep. there in the future. Yep. Michael Zarafa, um, yeah. <laughs> Lara. What were your thoughts on the, the Zarafa-Lara fight? I just – I think you saw levels. Lara was – he's 40 – I don't know, 40, 41. He just looked very patient. His technique was good and that's what won it at the end of the day. <laughs> like that shot was nothing special, just a nice left hand. Yeah. Um, I th- just think Zarafa looked a bit lost. I don't know if it was the moment, the lights, I don't know. But, yeah, you could see the difference in levels once you get to that stage. And and I think activity plays a bit of a part in it, but it's it's the interesting thing there too is that that you've had a a, a bit of a rough last couple of years as well with activity. Yeah, how's that been for you? It's been has its pros and cons. I mean, it's been good because I've been in the gym. I haven't left the gym like I've always been in the gym, but it sucks being on the sideline for the last three, four years. Like, well, I would say on the sideline, you had COVID, then yeah, you had, I had yeah. promotional contract issues and I was like, I was over it. Just like, yeah. fuck, <laughs> yeah. I can't wait to get out of this situation. It was hard, you know. Yeah. Um, I was fighting once a year and I wanted to be fighting more. Yeah. But I just had to stay in the gym, stay true and just keep learning or trying to learn. Well, you're definitely one of the most respected fighters in Australia and, mm. and one that I know a lot of Australians would have loved to seen more of now. Yeah. We've, um, we've happily signed you with No yeah. Limit and we've got, um, you know, we've got some big plans ahead and, yeah. and we're really excited about that. Mm-hmm. Um, how, is, how has the signing been for you? It's been awesome. When I got the call, when we got the call, when we spoke at the start of the year, it was like... It really sunk in. I go, okay, this is where my career starts. You know, this is no more uh, BS, no more uh, just going through so so much hell to get a fight. This is where my career can start. And then as I think we've known each other since or I've known your brother since we've been, since I've been 10, 11 yeah. years old. So we've always had that connection and it was a no-brainer for me when uh, we got the call. And I want to get, I want to show Australia they have a really great fighter yeah. that they haven't heard of yet. 
So, well, you know, I, th- I think the you know a lot of people in boxing know exactly who you are. Yeah. But the the wider Australia, I think they they're gonna get to know you over the yeah, over the coming crossed. years. And yeah. um, I, I suppose just to help people to get to know you a little bit, tell us a little bit about about your story. Northern Beaches boy, Narrabeen yeah. boy. Yeah. Um, what's what's your story? How'd you get into boxing? Um, and yeah. So it's a, it's a, it's, yeah, it's a weird story. I was into uh, WWE when I was <laughs> like, I loved it. Who was your favorite wrestler? John Cena at the time. Yeah, nice, nice. Um, yeah, I was into WWE and then we were, we were driving past this little gym in Narrabeen and I saw a ring, like it was a small gym. It was a two blocks away from my house and I go, I go to mum. Can I like go in there? I want to wrestle. I want to try it. And she's like, I don't think it's a wrestling ring. But in Spanish, she said, no. she was like, I'll take you in anyway, because I was overweight as well. So she's like, I'll take you in anyway, see if like, see if it's a wrestling ring, but it wasn't. And I started boxing like just to lose weight from then. I was like, I'll wow. give it a try. And then I fought a year and a half later at the Golden Gloves. Well, lost all the weight first, and, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and that so that was Kickstart, right? Kickstart, yeah, yeah. That was where I met your brother. Yeah, yeah. We used to go around there with Tommy. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Because we were, we were um, we were training at the Academy of Sport around the corner with Manly. Yeah. And then yeah, it was a good little gym. Yeah, I'd ride my pushy every afternoon there. <laughs> But you're a you're a you're a handy surfer too. Like everyone I speak to, they nah. reckon that you, that you go all right. Well, you go better than me. You go better than me. <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm like I can surf. I can hold my own out there, but I'm not like I'm not like my mates. They're just on another level. Yeah. And who are some of your mates that are that are decent surfers now? My best mate would be Jordy Lawler. Jordan yep. Lawler. He's a yeah. Just the stuff he does. He just I don't know how. I don't know how they do that. Um, what blew my mind was he's he's had a hard time too with the, with the surfing world, and it's very hard to get your get earn your shot. Mm. But he had a heat in pipeline, and we we're all watching it. And he got a wild card, and I think he got a spot in the comp. I think like an hour before, like he didn't know. He's just like, you got to call, you got to get to your heat in an hour. And he was in Hawaii there, just like wow. And I wish I could get the wave, but it was one of the biggest waves I've ever seen. And he's just pulled in, got barreled, just, yeah, I don't know how that they do that stuff. Yeah, it's that's like, scary. At least 10 foot, easy. Yeah. It, could, it looks cool when they're, when they're on it, but I, couldn't, I could only imagine how it feels when you. Yeah. So yeah. He's probably my best mate, but yeah, I'd, I'm nowhere near. Well, so. that's fair enough. You're comparing all, yourself to him. Like, all, all my other mates, are, they're way better than me. Yeah. I remember we're in a, a surf trip in G-Land and three or four of my mates just like best, like so much skill. They could be on the world tour if, if they wanted to, you know. Um, just scary. And I'm just there just like the deer in the headlights and the surf going, oh, my God, this is fucking crazy. <laughs> Where's uh, the best place to surf? Narrabeen. <laughs> but don't go there, though. Don't go there. <laughs> Is that being biased though? You're, you're, you're obviously biased, Narrabeen boy, Narrabeen local. Yeah. Is there any better surf than Narrabeen? I think there's great places to surf around <laughs> the world. Um, I don't know. Let's, I haven't really like gone on any proper like amazing surf trips where I've gone to different islands. Been to G-Land a few times, Bali, but... I think that's where that's where it stops because I'm not <laughs> I'm not a surfer, you know. Yeah. But it's yeah. But you can fight. Yeah. But you're also a decent footy player too. No. Have been sharks. <laughs> hey. uh-huh. I was a yeah. I was a prop growing up. Under I think I started under sixes, played to like under tens, and then ended up boxing. Why is it all the the good? The good um, fighters start off as a as a front rower. Alex Volkanovski started off as a front rower. You started off as a front rower. Now yep. you're a, a middleweight. He yeah. was a, yeah. I don't know. I just like my food when I was. In. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still relate do. to that. I don't know. But Jesus, yeah, that was a long time ago. I just remember playing at Lake Park and. So one of one of my good mates, um, and former footy teammates. Yeah. Anthony Watmo. Yeah. Narrabeen Sharks. Yep. Mayor of Narrabeen. 
slept. You could say that. He claimed it for a little while. <laughs> I don't know if he still is, but I, I reckon he, he owned that that moniker for 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 a little period of, yeah. of time. Um, so he was also a Narrabeen Sharky. Yeah. Did you, you ever have much to do with Chalk or any of the the manly boys around there? Uh, not really. With Chalk's, bro- I actually used to be a bricklayer. Yeah. And I used to work with Chalk's brothers. Yeah. Right. Uh, that's how I knew Chalk, and then his son used to play for the Sharkies as well. So, yeah, it's a so he'd sort of sit in between. How old's How old's Jakey? I don't know. He must no. be a little bit younger than you. Is he? I th- yeah, I think he yeah. is. I think he is. I remember in primary school he was a little younger than me. When yeah. did you um, finish up playing footy? I don't remember. I think it was under tens, under elevens. Yeah, but you had some <laughs> had some good experiences there. You've yeah. played you played against some current NRL players in your time. Yeah. And uh, got the wood on them. Yeah, you could say that. <laughs> it was actually a, it was actually a school game. It was uh, Narrabeen North versus Avalon in PWSA. Yeah, nice. And uh, he might not like me saying this, but I put a hit on Sam, Sam Beryl. <laughs> they beat, they smashed us. They smashed us that day. But I just remember that, and then I just remember his name coming up, and he was yeah. Rooster's boy now. So I'm like, oh fuck, yeah. <laughs> just sick. Yeah, so so you can claim that one. See, that that'll be a little bit like people that would claim claim getting a win over you in the amateurs too. They'd be able to yeah. hang on to that now. Yeah, you could say yeah. that. Yeah, but you got that. You own Sam Verrills for now. Yeah, <laughs> you can say that. <laughs> you, you toughened him up. You, you, you let him into an NRL career. I like it. Oh, that I was like funny. it. I like it. It's yeah, good. it was just. Uh, I just remember it. Like, but they they smashed us that game. But I just remember tackling him and giving him a good hit. And like, yeah, it was funny. It was no, you got to claim it. You claim it. <laughs> claim it. Claim every, everything you can get. You always got to claim it. <laughs> um, now, look. Obviously, growing up on the beach is plenty to do. As we said, we're going through your yeah. junior sporting career, surfing, yeah. footy, boxing. At what point did you know that, that boxing was your calling? That's a hard one. I've always, like in the amateurs, I didn't really treat it very seriously. Um, I always knew in the back of my mind I wanted to be professional. Um, I beat some good names in the amateurs. I've done international competitions, but when I really took it seriously was when I turned pro. And I think the first time I fought Reynolds, that's when I was like, I can really make something out of my life with this sport. It was a good fight too. Yeah. I mean, he was fit and he was at the time, at that time, no one really wanted to fight him. Nah. He was coming off uh, Eubank. What was that light heavyweight he fought? I don't remember, but he it was very avoided. And then that yeah. fight with Damien Hooper where he almost got the – That was crazy. It's still one fight. of my favourite fights. So I was the only kid that put my hand up and go, I'll fight him. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fight Reynolds and that was a good fight. Yeah. No, I remember I was excited about that one because yeah. I thought such a good matchup. You were the young, hungry guy on the yeah. way up taking on, you know – he was very dangerous at that time. Yeah. And then he obviously knocked Daniel Gill out and you heard yeah. him with a jab and Daniel Gill won an IBF world title. Yeah. Yeah, I was, I was kind of – What was that fight like for you? Because obviously one of your big turning points there, getting the getting the win against Reynold, how was the lead up to that and and, and how was the experience for you? Uh, I remember there was, sl- there was a lot of sleepless nights. I was just so focused and so ready to what I had to do and – yeah, it was kind of – it was good nerves. I was kind of scared, but then in a good way. Yeah. Like I knew I just had to face him. And I knew I was better than him. I just needed to show it. I think it was more just a first time in the big lights, first time in a big fight. I was at the ICC, so it was a big stadium. I just remember the crowd was so far up. Yeah. <laughs> but it was good. Yeah, it was mad. And what was the feeling like getting the win? A big relief. <laughs> a big. I just remember um, saying to myself after, I can really make something out of this after that fight. Yeah. It was the first time I actually properly really believed in myself. Well, I can really do something here, beating him. And he was talking a lot of smack before that fight. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my God, I've never been in this situation. But he's actually coming for my head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was good. Yeah. And then so – so obviously there's there's a lot of big fights that lay ahead for you yeah. in your future. What are what are some of the fights that you're really eyeing off that you'd love to get the opportunity to to have? Um 
I haven't really looked at the middleweight division, but I know there's good names, Janabek. I know there's another guy called Hamza, Hamza Shear, as I've done the rounds with. He's a young up-and-comer. These are the names I'm looking at, whether possible fights, um, Carlos Adamas. Mm. But Adamas is strong. Yeah, time will tell. Yeah. Hopefully those fights can happen one day and – I'm never, I've never shied away from a fight, so I've no. I know there's there's something there that I'm willing to show. I can't wait to show it with those guys with that top level. Yeah, I, I can't honestly. I think the the next um, next twelve months, next two years with you is going to be really exciting. Yeah, and onwards. Yeah, hundred percent. Knowing what the what the fights are that lie ahead of you, what's mm-hmm. what's in the division now. Is there anyone that you see in Australia that you'd you'd still like to dance with or? You're just looking globally. If it made sense, uh, I don't really like talking about other fighters or any. Yeah. To be honest, um, I know I'm a level above them. So, if the opportunities come, though, if if those fights happen, they happen with the other guys here. But yeah, I don't really like talking about those guys. I remember you had a really vocal crowd. I was going back to that rental file. I remember you had a really vocal support crew there. Who's yeah. who's who's everyone that gets behind you and comes to your fights? Who's that? All your all your local crew. The Narrabeen boys. Yeah, they could be Avalon boys too. There's a few of them rowdy ones there. <laughs> um, yeah, they're just people that have known me since I've been young, and they're really passionate, and they just support me all the way. Um, yeah, they are pretty vocal. I don't know if they're like Sam Goodman's crowd, but <laughs> they're vocal. Hey, they're setting they, the benchmark. They're similar. I think they're yeah. similar in a way. <laughs> yeah. They'd all be keen to see you back in the ring though too, like after yeah. you get, get to see you fighting here in Australia. Yeah. I know no that you'll have some support. I know there's a few buses coming yeah, that nice. I haven't organised, so that's yeah. a good thing. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. So there's some numbers coming. Yeah. No, I, I'm really looking forward to, to what you've got coming up, but um, – yeah. You, Looking back at your your amateur career and yeah. um, some of the people that you've been around, I, I remember the there was the stacked New South Wales team that you've had there yeah. at one stage. Who were who were some of the names that were in there? I was just looking at the photo before. It was the Cambos was there. Tim was Tim Zoo was there. Nikita was there. Opatia. Willis Meehan was there. Um, God. Just trying to remember the picture. Oh, who was next? Yeah, one of the Maloney brothers was there. Yeah, right. I don't know which one. Yeah. I'm hopeless at that. I remember Yui Dib too. Yeah. Yui Dib. Yeah. He was there. What a team. Yeah. So many people that have gone on to, to solid professional careers yeah. and world titles and. Yeah, it's all that photo is pretty crazy. What was it like um, back then when you, when you were training together and. Yeah, it was cool. I just, I just remember looking up to them. I just remember, oh, these are really good amateur fighters and I'm here with them. I felt cool. It was one of the standouts back then. I mean, it's hard to say in that group, but I know. Uh, I was just saying this before. There was a kid, uh, I don't remember his name. His name was Lincoln. Oh, he was an Aboriginal kid. He won the Kansas World Cha- Ringside World Championships when he was young. Really? I just I just remember seeing the photo and I was like, oh, that kid was really, really good. I don't know what happened to him. You had him, you had Tim Zhu, you had Nikita. Oh, but Ty was big as well. He yeah. was he was young too. What weight was he fighting at then? I don't remember. Not don't yours remember. though. No, nah, I was like I think I was like fifty five kilos. Yeah, right. That actually that that trip, um you might not like me saying this, but I beat Harry Garside on my trip from Victoria <laughs> and that's where I met Harry. I was like, it's a good, it was a good fight. But yeah. knowing that like I could beat these guys, yeah. Um, that, yeah, that age was cool. That's crazy to think that you actually fought though too. I mean, we you were, were, were completely super different middle ways. Ways. Yeah. Yeah. It was wild. Well, I think we were 55 kilos. 50, yeah. 50, yeah. Gee, Harry must have been big then too. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, you were little, he, he was big. <laughs> that's crazy. Hey, who else did you fight back around that time? And anyone that's still around now? No. 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 I think that's, yeah. No, not really. What were, really. The, um, what were the training camps like, though, the, 
for for the team that you've had then? What were the training camps like? It was uh, just shadow boxing, making weight. Like, because yeah. I remember we just traveled there and then everyone was making weight. Yeah. So we're all shadow boxing in tennis courts with sweatsuits and um, just focusing on making weight. That was the main goal. Because it's tough, right? And then and we're then staying just... in a caravan park. Like, it was nice, but it was just like, that's all I really, really remember. I remember we had Nikita on the other week and everybody that I've spoke to has said that Nikita was a mischievous little pest of a kid as a young fellow, always up to no good. Yeah. What, was it, what was it like in camp? Was he well-behaved in camp? Was, was there anyone who was, um, you know, who was, who was a memorable? No, nah, I can't really remember, to be honest. I think with Nikita, like we did so many rounds together. When we were young, like that's, yeah, we were like every Wednesday, Saturday would be sparring and there'll be blood <laughs> and he obviously likes it. Obviously <laughs> likes it, yeah. <laughs> From what I saw. Um, but yeah, I don't really remember too much about it, but I just remember making weight all the time. How was it the rounds with Nikita back then? Because obviously Nikita's had that long break after a yeah. uh, after his amateur career and so – Everybody who's seeing Nikita now is seeing him as a pro, but you got to experience a time in the ring with him as an amateur. How different was he then? He's always been the same. He's had that little killer look in his eye, especially yeah. when you hit him well. He has that look <laughs> and he comes at you. Um, so he hasn't changed one bit, <laughs> I think. And um, you've, you've done a lot of rounds with Tim too. Yeah, as we got older, as yeah. I got older, me and Tim, yeah, we've had some really, really good rounds. Was there? Did you ever work together during that period around that amateur time, or has it only been when just, you hit the pros? Just when we hit the pros, yeah. That was. Uh, it was more me and Nikita in the amateurs, and yeah. then I think Nikita had a break, and then Tim was Tim started started up again, and we started sparring. Because yeah. I know you're one of um, you're one of Tim's main sparring partners, really. For, yeah. Before he started doing overseas camps, you yeah. were one of the guys who really got him ready here in Australia. Yeah. I mean, we did countless rounds. Like, we had good days, bad days. Like, he, could, <laughs> he could tell you, but like, we'd walk in there and we'd both like, just like, fuck, we were sparring again. Just like, that's how it was. Then we'd be in there and they will be just throwing punches, hell for leather. But it was good. Was there, um, was there anything that you learned or that you took away from that or, or that you were able to share with him, you think? To share with Tim? Yeah. His presence is very, very felt in the ring. Yeah. Um, something I've, you know, looking up to Tim when I've been younger too. Because I'm a little younger than him, so I've always looked up to him as well. His, uh, his presence in the ring is very there. And he can really drain you just by being in front of you. He's always on. That's something I learned from Tim very early on. Early on. He's, he's, a, he's a threat all the time. Yeah. That's interesting. That's the same sort of thing that you said about, about Yenebeck. Very similar. Yeah. He's always just there. Yeah. He's just always feel like there's something coming. You yeah. just have to be ready for it, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah. Um, and now you've you, you experienced a few trainers over your time as well. Yeah. Um, you spent a bit of time with, with Igor as well? In a way, yeah. Yeah. I mean, just always been around him. Yeah. Because we always used to head to Timmy, Timmy's gym and – at the time, it was Costa's gym. Um, just always being around them and learning from them, their style. They've, yeah, then no bullshit as they really get to work. So now we're heading into April 24. Mm -hmm. Got a big fight, big return to Australia. Yeah, <laughs> um, I'm stoked. You've, uh, the, the two years that you've, oh, sorry, the year that you've spent in the USA um, and the time that you've been away from, from Australian shores yeah. fighting, what what can we sort of expect to see different from Mateo or, or for the people who haven't seen you yet, um, what's a style that we can sort of expect to enjoy? Boxer puncher. Um, I, I know I can, I can spark someone out like that. Um, but there's more of a method to it now. Uh, there's more setups. There's more of a boxing IQ. Uh, I've landed in uh, coach – or with my coach, his name Coach Rick, I call him, and Coach Jesse, and they work together and their boxing IQ is something I'm in awe of. And I've learned so much the last six months where I've just like, I thought I was decent a year ago, but now I'm a better fighter. So I think you're going to expect 
It's going to be a good fight. I think if you, I'm not going to predict a knockout because yeah. I don't like doing that, but just know it can be there. Yeah. But that's your plan, right? Is that every, every opportunity you get, you'll go for that. You'll take I, it when it's I there. I guess so. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. if, it's, if it's there to be taken, yeah. then I'll take that knockout. Yeah, because I think the one thing that anybody who hasn't seen you fight, they're, they're going to learn that you've got some serious knockout power when it's, yeah. when, when it's there. Yeah. And it carries you out through the whole fight. I know that. Um, so he just has to be ready because I'll be ready. So <laughs> that's it. So not only have you had good sparring over in the US, but you've also learned a lot through your, through your new coaches. How's yeah. that relationship with them? Yeah, it's awesome. They're very open-minded people. They're humble people, and that's the most important. Um, and they're no bullshitters too. They would have told me if I've got, if I haven't got something special, or I can't do anything, or I can't make something out of myself in this sport. But we had a chat, and they're like, "You can really do something in this sport. You just have to uh, be humble, uh, be ready, and just listen, listen in a way." And just be you. That's the most important. Yeah. Be you. No, I'm honestly, I'm that excited about this. I'm that stoked yeah. that you're, that you're, <laughs> no, I'm that you're, that you're back in the ring and that, you know, we're able to, to play a big part in that. It's good um, to be home. How do you, how do you see the next, the next, you know, 12 months going for you? What's your, what are your goals? What are your plans? Obviously my goal is to be a world champion. I want to cement my name into the history books to be able to say when I'm old and be like, that's, that's, Lena did that. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty yeah. cool. Um, that's my main goal. But my next goal, my, well, my goal right now is to beat Mr. Gonzalez that's coming. And I know he's coming to fight and I know he's coming to win. So I have to be prepared. Have you been able to see much on him? Yeah, a little bit. I know he's a very, very, he's had a lot of amateur fights. A lot of professional fights. I think he's got a 20 and 0 record. But his opposition's not like I fought, I guess. So, but you still can't underestimate that. He's a fighter with two hands. Yeah. And he's got power. So I have to be very careful in what I do. Yeah. And uh, I got power too. So we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're all cool. looking forward to that. And then it's good to get to know a lot about you too. I mean, yeah. like I said, I know it's been a, it's been a tough couple of years for you. Yeah. So it's good that we're able to to share a little bit about <laughs> you too, so people can get to know more about you. Yeah. One thing I didn't touch on was your was your tattoos. You you got yeah. some ink, man. You've got some yeah. serious ink. Ah, uh, they're done by Caspian in DY. Yeah. Um, right. Yeah. What's, this a, is, uh, what's the story behind it? So it's all Mexican related, all uh, Christian, sort of Catholic related. And that's just to keep me safe when I do good. This one's to keep me safe when I do bad stuff. Um, <laughs> whether it's fighting, whether it's hurting someone, it just keeps people safe. Yeah, right. And then that's my little stepsister's name, which I don't get to see much. So. Yeah, they, they all mean something. This is a, a Mexican eagle. It's obviously my heritage, and then I got one on my back. Am so, I gonna? Am I gonna make you take your shirt off? No, nah, I got no? one on my back saying. Uh, <laughs> Are yeah. we doing this right now? <laughs> we El Tijuanero, which is my nickname, basically. I think we have to get your shirt off. Nah, nah. <laughs> you'll see it on the. Well, fight. Well, everyone's gonna see it at the fight yeah, anyway, you'll right? See it on the fight. How can you be coy about that? You, you're gonna be, you're, you're gonna be topless for the next <laughs> week. <laughs> You know, yeah, they'll won't, won't hurt to give them a that, that, that'll so we'll keep them ones up the sleeve. So yeah. you explain you explain what's coming, and now they'll just have to wait and yeah. see when you. I don't know if I'll get any more tattoos though. No, they hurt. That my last one on my back, I really was like, oh my god, how big is it? Probably my whole upper back. Yeah, right. But it's just yeah, I was in, I was in pain. So I you say like, that you say that you're not going to get any more, but yeah, I don't know. You've still got skin there. I can still. Yeah, I you, think you've got stuff to fill. Leave them. <laughs> so there's nothing, nothing that you're you're looking looking at getting in the future. Nah, I don't think so. It actually really hurt last time. <laughs> well, if you win a world title, you'd have to get something, though. Yeah, true. Sorry, when you win a world title, when I win a world title, yeah. maybe we'll see. I have to be in the right headspace. You have to really like plan to get a tattoo. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Well, I've got none, so I can't really speak to it. Yeah, it, hurt. it hurts. Yeah. People that just say yeah, it doesn't I'm, I'm hurt. I'm scared of pain. Fuck. I'm it scared of pain. It hurts. I'm scared of pain. <laughs> so what's the plan for you after looking forward past this fight? 
Um, what's the plan for you? Are you going to hang around? You're going to hit jet straight back to the US? I'm jetting straight back to the US. Yep. That's where I'm living now. That's where I'm training. Um, that's my life now. And I'll just kind of keep showing Australia that, you know, what I learn and I'll bring it back down here. And most importantly is just having Australia, the Australian public behind me, That that's going to be huge. And just showing the Australian public that, yeah, they've got a great fighter. Well, one thing I think we have to do is we've got to get you back down to a Manly game. Yeah. Yeah. I actually Manly's remember. Manly's going good this year too. I've been trying to follow. It's hard to follow when you're in Florida. The time difference is a lot. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've been following. Uh, that first game they had against the Rabbitohs is good at Vegas. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that was awesome. Then they I think they beat the Roosters. And then yeah. They haven't really. They knocked off Penrith as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And Penrith are like, wow. yeah, Penrith are the shit at the moment. They're, well, they have We been. got some hope. Let's, fingers crossed Tommy stays. Yeah. Tommy well, stays good. Tommy's on fire. Plus everyone else is firing too. Yeah. Yeah, I remember, so. I actually remember, I actually want to go to a game. I remember just always being young, having my meat pie and, um, fuck, what else? Meat pie, sausage roll or a, and a can of Coke watching the game when I was young. <laughs> but um, how good is it on the hill there though at Manly? Oh, it's beautiful. It's the best spot. Like yeah. even now when I go, I'll still either sit on the hill or I'll go down the, the southern end, yeah. southern end under the goalpost because the, there's always a spot there. I heard the ground has got like new renovations and stuff. Yeah. I actually haven't been since. Yeah. I think I saw a little bit of it, but I haven't been fully. Well, on that on that northern end, yeah. they've got they've got a new grandstand and there's all training facilities in under it. Oh, so really? It's, it's actually, we're going to have to go there. We're going to have to yeah, go we'll there. Go. Narrabeen, boy, you got to you got to. Yeah, I just remember watching the so many good games there. Yeah, I think you, I think you were playing once. Yeah, so, sorry, tell me more about these. Let's let's so, <laughs> it, it, it wasn't the Glenn Stewart, the Glenn Stewart thing where they punched. On. Yeah, yeah, Battle of Brookie. It was a very, um, it was a very close game, and I think you guys won by a field goal, a yeah. one point. And I've never heard a stadium erupt like that because yeah. Storm was a shit back then. Oh, yeah. Do, do you know what? That might have been the one. Was that the one I broke my leg, Trenny, or was that a different year? Because we won by a field goal in that one, didn't we? I, it was It was. Huge. Actually, how old were you in 07? Nah, the crowd wasn't that big then. It was later. It was later. I don't know, but that was huge. Yeah. I just remember... I'm trying to remember the when they, when they turn up and the, the, how, there's there's no better place to watch footy is there when the when the crowd's yeah. on and they turn up and Manly's <laughs> winning yeah there's no better place nah Brookie Oval it's hard to get a park there to, oh, Jesus no. <laughs> no. jump on the jump <laughs> what do they call it last now? It's time not the L ninety anymore it's yeah. something else last time I went I parked illegally just to watch a game I got a ticket and I was like oh my god was it worth it though. Yeah, it was worth it. It was worth it. <laughs> we'll send it to the clubs if they reimburse it. We reimburse no, the supporters. That, that were good times. No, we're going to have to get, we'll, we'll get down to a game definitely. I don't know how much longer we've got you um, here, but when there, whenever there's a game on here, I think we'll have to get to one because I reckon this is manly season again. So we'll jump Fingers on the crossed. bandwagon. We'll both be on the bandwagon Fingers hard. Fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I, I'm looking forward to that. Look, we um, – Back to boxing now because we're getting a bit carried away there with with the footy. Yeah, um, you've got a big fight coming up, yeah. April twenty four, mm -hmm. Horden Pavilion. Yeah, you've got a great track record at the Horden Pavilion as well. That that was where who who who'd you fight at the Horden? Copland. Copland. I still remember yeah, that. Fight. Yeah, I took that fight, fight on four weeks' notice. Good fight, and he was um, he was touted really highly. Yeah. I don't think I was meant to win that fight. Nah. There was, it was a very 50-50 fight. Yeah. It was a good fight though. Yeah. But see, you it had that. All. That's one thing about you on the way up is that you always took these tough fights. Yeah. To, that people, other people weren't taking, like the rental fight. Yeah. And they've ended up being absolute crackers <laughs> and yeah. escalated you to the next level. Yeah. I mean, yeah. that's something I've always prided myself on is – you got to give it 100% the whole time. Uh, those fights I had, they were cool, but now it's looking on to the bigger picture now. And who's the greatest challenge for you in the division right now? I think Janabek. Yeah. Uh, just 
because what's what he's known for? He's known for a puncher, Southpaw. Uh, he's from Kazakhstan, I think. The, man, the, he's as he's solid, but nothing I can't take. I reckon we're manifesting something there. We've we've said his name enough today to to yes yeah. to, to make it happen. I, I I see that as something happening for you in the future. I reckon it's a great fight too. Fingers crossed. If he stays around, I don't <laughs> know what he's doing. We'll get to him quick then. Yeah, he's um. I th- I thought he was call out, calling out Canelo. He the way everyone is, but as you would. Well, that's the beauty of it too. Is that you're you're only one weight division. Well, you were fighting at super middleweight as well. Yeah, I guess we've got two markets now. Yeah, we can chap into one day. Yeah, um, I'm not scared of fighting super middleweights as I've proven. I've fought guys in Dubai where they're not super middleweights, they're light heavyweights. <laughs> they're big boys. But I can hold my own against them. Where's the craziest place that you fought? Because you've fought a few uh, around the globe at a lot of different places. What's I think I don't know. It's either Dubai or Vietnam. Yeah, right. I had an exhibition in Vietnam and it was pretty crazy. They actually um I got sick thirty minutes before I went out. They fed us this food. Like they were sponsored by a food company and they gave us these packages of food and I was hungry before the fight, so I ate a bit of this brown rice and Started feeling odd, so I went into the toilet, chucked a tacky, got it out. And it was just an exhibition fight because um, Vietnam professional boxing wasn't allowed in Vietnam at the time. So I think, I think Vietnam could be – oh, Dubai is up there too. Yeah. I think actually, you know what, chuck Vietnam out. I think Dubai. Yeah. When I first fought in Dubai, it was um, – I fought on the Emirates golf course, right in the middle of the golf course, looking over the whole city. And I, I, I think it was before Reynolds. I think before I fought Reynolds, and I still didn't really believe in myself that much. Like it was like, holy shit, I'm on this stage where like one of the sheiks was sitting there. I'm like, holy fuck, what's going on here? Um, fighting out in a golf course in the middle of Dubai, like just it was wild. Something oh, that's so you, unbelievable. Yeah, you get to. St- now, did you love that because because of the whole experience, or because you're a mad golfer yourself? Yeah, in a way, <laughs> in a way, both. In a way, both. I knew what golf course I was standing on. I knew it was so expensive to play there, and I knew they have a uh, they have a tournament there where Roy McIlroy like plays. Like all the big players play there, and I was fighting on it, which is pretty cool. <laughs> How long have you been golfing for? Because they reckon you go all right too. I'm hearing stories about that too. Nah, I actually, I started before. I started golfing before I started surfing, put it. Really? So I used to play, I was a member at Mona Vale Golf Club when I was, I think, 11, 11, 12, well, maybe 10, 11. And um, yeah, played junior pennants there and oh, I love it. But then I chose boxing. Do you still golf now though? When I can. Um, because there'd be some beautiful courses over there too. There is, they? but at my golf clubs have been packed away. When I'm in training camp, Strictly I boxing. don't. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I haven't been able to find, or I haven't been able to play golf for a couple of months now. Last time I played was here in Australia, and the rest has just been training, training, training. So were you a junior champ as well over on the beaches? Nah, no. Nah. There was a few match plays where I won against other courses. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but golf's hard. <laughs> it's hard. It's, it's, hard. I guess it relates to it. boxing. Yeah. It's just one man in there. Yeah. Like you're a constant battle with yourself. Yeah. Hit a bad shot, you can't. You can't knock it out. No. Nah, if you have a bad <laughs> round, you just got to forget about it <laughs> and just keep going, keep moving forward. That's yeah. It. But it's very similar. Yeah. I like golf though. It's a good way to switch off. Well, we're looking forward and it's to safer the, um, than surfing. Yeah. Put it that way. It's probably a bit safer than boxing too. Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I, I'll tell you what, you're, a, you're a, talented, a talented athlete across the board. Yeah. Um, I just like sports. I don't yeah. know why. But I'm glad that you're in boxing because you're a hell of a boxer and, yeah. and I think you've, you've got a lot to offer and, and there's so much that we're going to see from you over the next few years. I'm so excited. I'm and, pumped. Yeah. I'm, it's good to be home. It's good to have this opportunity. I know it's a big opportunity, but it feels like I'm meant to be here. 100%. This is, this is 
what it's been leading up to my whole life. Maybe, maybe if I, if I say I was in this position three, four years ago, maybe I wouldn't have been ready. I've been thinking about it now I'm ready. Like it's, it's here, it's happening. Yeah. And I can't wait. One thing points bet and I have in common is we're both one of a kind. Oh, your horses, points bet's the only thing built different around here, mate. <laughs> no, shack up. There's only room for one shack in this town. For a betting experience that's truly built different. I got all day. Download the points bet app today. Points bet, built different. You win some, you lose more. For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website. Yeah, no, I can't wait either. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna build your perfect boxer. <laughs> okay. Brought to you by Points Bet, which is built different. We want to build your perfect boxer. Like you've oh, you've seen plenty of boxing over the years. Let's let's build your best boxer. <laughs> let's start with power. Who would you have as your power component of your best boxer? It's actually my favourite fighter, uh, Edwin Valera. Yeah, right. I think he had 29, 29 fires, 29 knockouts. Ooh, that's power. That's power. Uh, yeah, sad story, the way he ended, but he had some serious power. And I think, yeah, for a, for a smaller guy, I think he was a big puncher. He could really spark you out. I like that. What about speed? Ooh. Uh, just trying to think. Pacquiao. Yeah. I like Pacquiao. Pacquiao. It's, hard, it's hard not to have Pacquiao in there somewhere. He's yeah. And he throws 12-punch combinations from yeah. different angles. And pop, 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 pop. <laughs> pop, 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 <laughs> Yeah, I think he's definitely up there for speed. What about boxing IQ? Andre Ward. Very smart. Very smart. Yeah. Would have loved to seen a few more fights from him too. Yeah, me too. But I guess he left left on his own terms. And yeah, did what he wanted. What'd you like about him? His defense, his mind, like his boxing IQ. I yeah. guess his counter punching was really good too. What about the jab? Who's got your jab in your your best boxer? Oh. Lennox Lewis, Larry Holmes could be up there too. Like your heavyweight. I'd say Lennox Lewis. Yeah. yeah. He dominated with that jab. He dominated the heavyweight division. Yeah. Chin. Who's got your chin? Chavez. Yeah. Julio Cesar Chavez. Yeah. Hell of a fighter. Yeah, I think he takes chin. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. There's so many. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know where to start. Yeah, Chavez. So, yeah, let's say Chavez. Yeah. What about heart? That's a hard one. Yeah. Every f – I'm just trying to think of me a Mexican fighter because they're known for the biggest hearts, I think. Man, I don't know. I feel like everyone has oh, no. some yeah, sort yeah. of heart in there. You've got to have heart fight. to get in the ring, right? This is a hard one. Um, no names are coming to me. I feel like everyone has some sort of yeah. heart in there. Yeah. We'll put, we'll put everyone Let's in put there. Yeah. Let's put mine. Yeah. Let's put mine. I like it. A tapia. Heart. Well, I've been a, known for my heart too, so. Yeah. Put mine. 100%. Finally, you can't have a great boxer without good defence. Who's got your defence? <laughs> Wow, it's either – let's say James Tony. Ooh. I was going to say Mayweather, but I like James Tony style yeah, way better. Yeah, yeah. Um, Both very, very nice, very nice. Yeah, James Tony. Yeah. He was so – yeah. Just very slick, very unique, very unique. Well, that's a hell of a boxer that you built there. Yeah. <laughs> I like that you included yourself in there too. That I was, don't know. I just can't think yeah. of – I feel like I said everyone – I yeah. feel like everyone's got some heart in there. Like yeah. when it gets gritty, you, 
Yeah, you see something from fighters. No, well, everyone's going to get the chance to see what you've got to offer now. Um, we're very close to, to fight day. Fight week's just around the corner. Yeah. <laughs> and looking forward to um, seeing you at the Horden Pavilion, yep. April 24th, Wednesday night. I'm excited, mate. Here in Sydney, in front of your home crowd. Yeah, they're, they're excited too. A lot of people have been messaging me saying this is it's going to be big, so... No, well, I was on, I was over on the beaches on the weekend at, at Junior Footy, and people were talking about it there. So there's there's yeah. a, a lot of people heading <laughs> over keen to see you see you play, see you fight. So I'm, I'm excited. I'm yeah. excited to show the people what I've learnt and what I've picked up over the last year of being in the states and being around such elite fighters 24 seven. I just can't wait to show it. Well, now you're focused. Purely on this fight for now, but um, for us, we've we've got some great plans ahead for you, and can't <laughs> wait to unleash you next week, and and then to show off everything else that you've got to offer, and keep rolling you out, and um, putting on some great performances mm-hmm. for that for the locals here. I can't wait. I can't. Um, yeah, it's sending me a, a chill down my spine. <laughs> I can't wait to just be in the ring and be in that fight mode. We look forward to it. All right. Well, thanks for joining us on the No Limit Boxing Podcast. Thanks, Georgie. And we'll see you at the fight. (laughs) Make sure you like, subscribe, and keep watching these great behind-the-scenes stories that we've got with all of our great fighters here at No Limit. And tune in for Matteo Tapia next Wednesday night. That's it.